Welcome to the 2020 Odyssey Symposium, and thanks for joining our virtual journey. I'm George Ripsack, Director of the Columbia University Odyssey Coordinating Center. I'm going to give a summary of the state of our Odyssey community. Let me start by thanking our sponsors, our corporate sponsors, Bayer, Janssen, IQV, and Odysseus. Thank you to them for their funding this year, and in fact, their funding in previous years of the Odyssey Symposium. Let me also thank the U.S. Food and Drug Administration through their Scientific Conference Grant Program are funding this year's program as well as last year's with funding for future years of the Odyssey Symposium. As you know, our symposium is always free and we appreciate the support. Thank you very much to the Odyssey 2020 Scientific Committee for all their hard work in putting this together. And thanks to the tutorial faculty uh, yesterday, we had a number of uh, five tutorials and over 550 collaborators registered for them. It's a lot of work to put together a tutorial and then to give it, so thank you for that. And thanks for the organizers of the 2020 Study-a-thon. We called it Proteus, and it's about externally validating and recalibrating two prediction models used in common clinical practice. So thanks to the Tufts PACE team and their collaborators. Here's a picture of the uh, symposium for today. Um, you'll notice that it's 18 hours long. This year we have a virtual symposium, so we're covering all time zones around the world. Let me comment right now that we're using the Teams platform. Earlier in the year, in March, we held a study-a-thon and we used the Teams platform uh, to facilitate our work, and we liked it so much that we're moving to that for Odyssey in general. And so we're using the Teams platform for this symposium, and we'll be switching our forms to that in the future. You'll notice that this symposium starts at uh, 400 hours uh, universal time or about midnight, my time in New York. A um, couple of the sessions like this one on the state of the community and the plenary session, which I'll mention in a minute, are repeated twice so everyone can see it. Other things appear to be repeated on the schedule, but realize they're different versions. So if you can stay up the 18 hours, it's worth watching each different version of them. <clears throat> The plenary session is focused on phenotype development. That's very exciting. We know when you do one of these large scale studies, uh, sometimes the most work goes into developing the phenotypes. And so we have representatives from industry and academia talking about phenotyping at large scale, and that's gonna follow this talk. Later on, unfortunately shown only once, we have a panel on building trust, evidence and communication. Representatives from government, from academic publishing, from lay publishing, and from academia talking about uh, evidence communication and um, uh, in the context of COVID where we've seen a lot of problems in this regard. We have our lightning talks, two sessions, data standards and methods research and clinical application and evidence dissemination. So please join those. And our second annual Women of Odyssey Leadership Forum where we have representatives from academia uh, industry and government uh, on that one, so don't miss that. The Titan Awards are Odyssey's opportunity to reward leadership and accomplishment. They're uh, nominated by their peers and shown here are those nominees for this year, so we congratulate everyone on this list. Please join us in the closing session where we'll announce the winners in the category shown on the left. And we're going to have a little fun along the way. We always have fun during the Odyssey Symposium, but we have even more planned this time. There are some fun things you can do with the virtual environment. In Teams, there are channels, and there's the Odyssey meme -athon. Um, Some of them are funny, and the rest are funnier. Uh, they're really good, so you could take a look and please comment on them. Next, we have the Family Feud, where our Odyssey former Titan winners are squaring off against each other in two different epic battles to see how well they know Odyssey. And then interspersed in the day, we have visits from uh, collaborators, hard workers, Titan winners, and some special outside guests who talk about Odyssey. And you can win a prize by filling in your Odyssey bingo card with live action shots. Get, a, get all in a row and you may get a prize. And then in addition, we have Odyssey energy breaks where collaborators lead you through some exercise in between our sessions. 
Let's talk a little bit about Odyssey. It's an open science community. Odyssey's mission is to improve health by empowering a community to collaboratively generate the evidence that promotes better health decisions and better care. Our values are here, innovation, reproducibility, community, collaboration, openness, and beneficence. And we've been reviewing this via committee in the setting of structural racism. Here's a current picture of our map uh, which has continued to grow in size and fun to see how well it covers the world. Um, how do you count our users? Well, one way is to look at our forms. We have uh, almost 4,000 distinct users who have placed 25,000 posts and almost 5 million views. We have weekly community meetings, a number of work groups, five regional chapters. We do our tutorials, our symposia around the world. We're on Twitter and LinkedIn. And now, as I mentioned earlier, we're moving to the new team's environment. We're a diverse community. We, have, we cover academia, health systems, technology, pharmaceutical industry, government, patients, and payers. Uh, by discipline, we have informatics, computer science, epi, statistics, medicine, clinical, and health policy. And uh, registered for the symposium, we have over 1,000 new members. Odyssey is an international data network. We have 166 different databases from 23 countries. How many unique patients do we have? Well, the lower bound uh, estimate would be um, how many patients, unique patients are there in the largest database in each country, assuming there's little overlap between countries. And there we get 578 million, but that's a gross underestimate. Uh, the number of records we have who have registered to be part of research is 2.7 billion. So whatever that number, it's very, getting very close to 10% of the world population. Every one of those records is encoded in the same exact data model, the OMOP common data model, using the vocabularies, which have grown to 9 million concepts, up from uh, 7 and a half million that we did on our last check. This covers uh, data from, in medicine from around the world. Odyssey does its work through work groups uh, in collaborations. Here shown 11 active work groups, and let's see here a little bit from three work groups on, on their status. Hi everyone, my name is Claire Blackader and I'm responsible for the CDM working group, and we maintain and update the OMOP common data model standards and conventions. Our goal is to keep the CDM responsive to the needs of the community, not only in modification to the structure of the model, but in clarity of standards and expectations. Our goal this upcoming year is to evaluate CDM version 6 and to make any changes necessary to increase widespread adoption. This past year was a huge success. Uh, we did set an objective for ourselves to update the CDM documentation and boy did we deliver. I am so proud of what this group has done. Um, we were able to systematically update uh, each table and field, effectively reducing confusion and solidifying our expected conventions for the community. If you'd like to check that out, please do so. You can find it at github.odyssey.io slash common data model. Moving forward uh, in the next year, we are excited to get back to hearing proposals on expected changes to the model and to continue our always lively discussions on the proper way to represent different clinical types of data. If you'd like to get involved, we have meetings once a month, uh, the first Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Eastern, right after the Odyssey community call. You can find us in the Teams tenant um, if you'd like to join the meetings. And if you're not able to join, please feel free to either post a question or suggestion on our general page in the Teams environment um, or on our GitHub issues page. This is Christian Reich. Um, I wanted to just let you know um, we have achieved something which we've been working for quite a while, removing a huge impediment. Um, and that is we added uh, vocabularies for China to the standardized vocabularies. It was a lot of work. Uh, as you may or may not know, um, standardization and coding systems in China um, haven't been as developed yet. So this is all happening at the same time as we are bringing them in. So we now have Chinese drugs. The vocabulary is called NCCD, 50,000 uh, records. We have ICD-10 CN for China. 34,000 records all mapped to SNOMED, of course. 
and ICD-9 procedure codes, proxy and 13,000 records. That's the, um, um, the achievement of the people listed here um, who've been working on this uh, diligently for quite a while. We hope now that we have that, that we can make um, progress very quickly um, in, in, all, in China and Chinese speaking countries um, so that we can start uh, doing all the Odyssey magic in those places as well. Thank you. And if you have questions, let me know uh, or let the uh, vocabulary team know. Thank you. The patient level prediction and population level estimation workgroups are two workgroups that work closely together to advance the methods we use to generate evidence in Odyssey. As the names imply, these workgroups are specifically focused on building predictive models and on estimating average effect sizes in a population. For example, the effects of treatments on the risk of some outcome. Both workgroups work closely together to evaluate existing methods, thus providing empirical evidence for some of the design choices one faces when designing a study. We also develop novel methods and evaluate those. But we don't stop there. To make sure these methods, both new and old, are available to the Odyssey community, we develop and maintain Hades, a set of open source R packages that are used in virtually all Odyssey studies to perform large scale analytics. This year, we published several high profile methods papers. One that I'd like to highlight is the description of the legend principles in Jamia where we outline principles that we believe will greatly improve the reliability of observational data. In addition, we've continued to develop the Hades packages, and these, for example, have been instrumental in Odyssey's response to COVID-19. Moving forward, we're aiming to develop new methods for generating evidence across a distributed data network such as Odyssey. A long-term goal is to move to patient-level estimation, where we can predict the causal effect of a treatment in an individual patient. Patient-level prediction and population-level estimation workgroups have regular joint meetings every month. Because we're spread across the world, we have separate meetings for the Eastern and Western hemispheres. Odyssey is engaged in international initiatives. Here's a list of some of them, and we're going to hear about a few of them. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has recently, I'm proud to announce, awarded a contract to Odyssey to be its convener organization. The FDA's Center for Biologics and Evaluation Research, or CBER, has a program called Biologics Effectiveness and Safety, which is part of Sentinel. And the leads, Columbia University, Northeastern, UCLA, will be convener of meetings, training, and research for that center and it will facilitate broad collaboration between Odyssey and the FDA. Hi, my name is Karthik Natarajan. I'm a faculty member at Columbia University's Biomedical Informatics Department. I've been a long-term member of the Odyssey community and have more recently been focused on EHR data related to the All of Us Research Program. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the AOU, uh, it's an ambitious initiative by the NIH to collect a million people across the U.S. of diverse backgrounds uh, and collect their electronic health record data, uh, surveys on them, genomic data, as well as, well as device data such as uh, wearables. So as of right now, we have 46 sites across the country who are submitting EHR data in OMOT for format uh, to the NIH and are, are collecting their, their genomic samples. We have about 220,000 participants with EHR data currently in OMOP. Um, and in the coming year, we are looking at combining this data with genomic data. So that's one of our priorities for 2021. And also incorporating new data types such as Fitbit and other wearable uh, data sensors. So this is where we, I can see the Odyssey community really helping uh, the All of Us program is figuring out how do we integrate these new data types and help researchers uh, generate new evidence. 
Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Handel. Um, I'm at Oregon Health and Science University in the United States. I lead the National COVID Cohort Collaborative along with my colleague Christopher Schute, uh, who will be speaking next. I'm really excited to introduce the N3C to you all today. Um, we are um, very proud to be key partners with the Odyssey community and leveraging the OMOP data model to harmonize data across the United States for supporting COVID analytics. We've developed quite a, a large community of, re of researchers who have leveraged OMOP as our target data model to perform a robust analytics of the COVID data across the United States. We fundamentally rely on a deep partnership with the Odyssey community to leverage the tools and resources and data quality assurance um, activities of the community to make sure that we can do the most robust analytics possible. We're really excited to invite the world to participate in the N3C and help reveal discoveries in COVID research. And I'm Chris Schute. I'm a co-lead with Melissa of the N3C. And uh, I'm equally excited to participate in uh, the Odyssey OMOP uh, activities that we've been undertaking in N3C. It's, OMOP is central to the N3C uh, data coordination and integration process. We're using extensively a lot of OMOP tooling and Odyssey tooling, uh, the Atlas tooling, uh, the data quality dashboard for quality evaluation. Uh, and as everybody knows, OMOP is the core target model for data from across the country to come into the N3C in a way that we can harmonize it to a single framework in a single data model. Uh, the Odyssey community has been extraordinary, uh, contributing hundreds of person hours to help us with this task, writing queries, helping us with the data transformations, and we're very, very excited uh, by this partnership and look forward to it continuing. Hello, my name is Peter Reinbeck. I'm Associate Professor of Health Data Science at the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And I'm also the coordinator of the European Health Data and Evidence Network project, or EDEN, uh, that is building a large-scale federated network of data sources standardized to the own common data model in Europe. And that project uh, will run for five and a half years, and we are now in, the, in our second, uh, second year in the project. Um, what's quite unique in the EDEN project is that we have a uh, a budget of 70 million euro to provide financial support to data partners to standardize their data to the Omicom data model and become part of the Eden and Odyssey data network. So I'm, I'm very happy that in 2020, Eden has been very active in extending its data network uh, by initiating a COVID-19 focus call in which 25 data partners have been selected out of uh, 75 applicants. And we are currently actively mapping these data sources uh, with an Eden task force. Erica Voss uh, is giving a lightning talk on this topic at the symposium, so I can recommend you to, uh, to visit her talk. Another highlight in 2020 is that we now have a total of 26 small to medium enterprises in Europe that are trained and certified to provide services in the ecosystem. So for example, installation of Odyssey tools uh, and the ETL from source to CDM. And we really need these, uh, this, this supportive network uh, to scale up uh, in Europe and also to sustain uh, the network. Uh, all this would not have been possible without the Eden Academy. Uh, an e-learning platform, and it's now freely available for the whole community, and it's it's being extended by collaboration between Odyssey and Eden uh, partners. If you'd like to know more about that, the Eden Academy, I recommend you pay a visit to the presentation of Hendrik John, one of our PhD students at Erasmus MC, who has done a great job in, in, in setting up this, uh, this environment. Finally, you will also find many posters at the symposium related to methods research tool development that has been done in Eden. Um, I'm, I'm sure you will enjoy that as well. If you'd like to have a chat with me or my colleague, Nigel Hughes from Janssen Research and Development, please visit our channel in the networking session. And I'm really, really looking forward to, to the next exciting Eden years to come. And, and I'm sure that the collaboration with the Odyssey community will be as awesome as before. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to work with you all in this, this exciting field. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Sin Chan Yu in uh, University of Korea. And I'd like to say about the uh, collaborative initiative at HERA. HERA is the uh, Korean nationwide uh, claim data ho holder. So they reviewed uh, the, all the Korean uh, 
national insurance data. And uh, at the beginning of uh, this pandemic, uh, Korea is the most, one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Uh, we do have the second most patients of COVID-19 uh, next to the next to China. And at the moment, Odyssey tried to uh, make a make a uh, collaborative initiative at the Hira because Hira has the powerful data at the time, and Hira has the experience about uh, with Odyssey network study before. So uh, after many um, discussion, uh, Hira admit the power of Odyssey and the open science, and uh, they do really uh, acknowledge it. We need a, a collaborative uh, data network for COVID-19. So at the study of uh, here I can join uh, as a data partner uh, of Odyssey uh, to provide their actual uh, data with COVID-19 patients. And I'm really proud of that. Uh, this initiative actually uh, encouraged many other data holders to join this uh, data network of COVID-19 for Odyssey and it really uh, inspires people uh, for the uh, open science uh, uh, for the COVID-19 research. Given that huge success uh, success we've achieved uh, in this year for COVID-19 research, I really uh, wanted to have uh, Korea and uh, Hira uh, participate more and more uh, Odyssey network study to generate uh, robust research findings and evidences. Odyssey is making a recognized impact. Shown here are some Odyssey events from the last year. The Korean International Symposium last December led to a signing among many health systems of a collaboration to do research together. The Odyssey Barcelona study on rheumatoid arthritis was uh, shown at the European E-Congress of Rheumatology. And the Odyssey Oxford study -athon, which replaced the European symposium, which could not occur because of COVID, uh, created important evidence for COVID, which we'll be covering in a few moments. The Yearbook of Medical Informatics is put forward by the International Medical Informatics Association each year. It reviews all the literature in the informatics field and picks the best papers. In the field of clinical research informatics, three papers were selected. Two of them were actually by Odyssey. One, the Odyssey Hypertension Study, which was published in Lancet, and the other, a study on pharmacovigilance called ADEpedia. Congratulations to those two winners. The Odyssey Hypertension Study was included in the medical letter, which is a summary of evidence and shows Odyssey's uh, evidence incorporation into clinical practice. The European Medicines Agency actually used two of the papers that came out of the uh, Oxford Study-a-thon, and the EMA itself highlighted the reproducibility of the Odyssey studies. Let's take a look at Odyssey research over the last year. We looked at the literature on PubMed using Odyssey, OMOP as search terms along with common authors. We also uh, looked at the forms for published papers and put out an explicit call for nominations. Uh, I realize we probably missed a lot of good papers. I apologize for that, but the 60 papers we highlight, I think are, are a good sign of Odyssey research. First, let's go to the Odyssey uh, vocabulary. Um, there are a lot of papers on mapping local codes. The first paper uh, maps uh, Odyssey maps local codes to Odyssey standard vocabularies using Odyssey tools and using tools from outside like National Library of Medicine, the Odyssey tools did quite well. The next paper um, shows the Australian medicines terminology being mapped to ATC using both Odyssey mappings and outside mappings. And again, the Odyssey mappings did quite well. The next shows that the Odyssey CDM uh, accommodated the vast majority of Austrian drug and diagnosis codes. And the next paper is a related one. The following paper uh, uses French source data that are successfully mapped to the Odyssey CDM, again, despite the use of local vocabularies. The next section is about creating local databases. The first one uh, creates an OMOP database in Germany, in this case using FHIR to collect the data for that database. And the next one is a different database also in Germany. The following uh, pilots uh, Saudi electronic health records into OMOP. And the next one looks at the European medical information framework and how it harmonizes to a common data model. 
Uh, this was then followed by Eden, the European Health Data and Evidence Network. Next, we move into feeding data, better ways to feed data into the model. And the first paper is a clinical document architecture being used to feed an OMOP database. Also, the use of natural language processing, uh, in this case, the CLAMP system to extract COVID-19 findings for an OMOP database. And then we move to adding domains to the common data model. The first one, adding veterinary data with human data to do cross-species research. Here, uh, integrating biospecimen data and reporting on the challenges that were encountered. And then we move uh, to supporting pharmacovigilance. Vigilance. This is a body of papers that <clears throat> were similar that I grouped together using the common data model. The first, uh, integrating spontaneous reports with observational data to improve adverse event detection uh, using colitis as an example. And this one, uh, putting adverse event reports from FAIRS into the OMOP CDM for adverse event detection. The next paper is designing an adverse event detection study using the OMOP CDM. And then we move on to a section about trial recruitment. Again, a set of papers looking at uh, using the OMOP CDM for this purpose. The first uses natural language processing to extract trial eligibility from notes uh, to be used in the OMOP CDM for selection. And the following also does uh, trial recruitment using the OMOP CDM. This paper, next paper is a little bit different. It's using the OMOP CDM as a source to a different COVID network uh, to do their trial. This paper studied whether eligibility criteria drawn from a randomized trial were sufficient to match populations between what was studied in the randomized trial and what happens in real world practice. And in fact, they found that the eligibility criteria were not sufficient to do that generalization. Then we moved to one paper that was a survey of clinical, uh, infra clinical research informatics and two of three papers were Odyssey or OMOP highlighted. Uh, once you have your data in a common data model, we can look at data quality. Uh, the first paper looking at completeness and entropy as metrics for quality. And the next paper looking at completeness and conformance, in this case, looking at an incrementally updated OMOP database. Uh, then we use pediatric codeine uh, use rates and were found to be similar between the source database and the OMOP converted database, highlighting the accuracy of that conversion. Uh, next, we move, now that we have data in the common data model, let's look at phenotyping, specifically start with the methods. The first one looks at machine learning uh, using a system called Aphrodite uh, to avoid having to create a good gold standard. It was found to um, better performance over naive classifier and transportable within the US and to a lesser extent internationally. Uh, the next one uh, uses information in electronic health records to serve as a gold standard to create a phenotype for claims data, thus again supplying a better gold standard. And the next one uh, uses does creates a high throughput method to test phenotype accuracy to avoid the need for manual case curation. So here we see three papers in a row involving how to get around the creation of a detailed gold standard. The next paper uh, describes guidelines for accurate phenotyping using electronic health record uh, data and observational research. And finally, a review of deep phenotyping in which several uh, Odyssey papers were featured. Now we move on to specific phenotypes that were published. The first being a comorbidity index calculator using the OMOP CDM. Next, using logistic regression to identify smoking status with a good AUC then logistic regression to identify end of life care with a better AUC, and then logistic regression to identify mortality with an even better AUC of 0.95 to 0.99 across databases. Uh, then a few papers looking at the phenotyping process. First, uh, what is the time savings from implementing a common data model to avoid the days to months it takes to move a phenotype from one institution to another when you don't have a common data model? And then a review of phenotype portability, uh, including Odyssey as one of the methods in that review. Uh, then move to tools for using the CDM to uh, carry out phenotyping. The first 
uh, creating an open source data vi viewer built on top of the OMOP CDM. The next is a little bit different. It's a clinical decision support platform that uses uh, FHIR to get to an OMOP database. And a related paper, um, again, using the OMOP CDM as the basis of decision support instead of the native electronic health record. Now, finally, we get to some evidence generation. Remember, characterization, estimation, and prediction. We'll start off with characterization. The first paper looks at antipsychotic medications and use varied across nations and by patient age. Uh, the next was an Odyssey network study of hospitalized COVID-19 patients. Uh, it first showed that high rates of comorbidities and with advanced age, but this study looked compared COVID-19 to influenza showing that patients were actually younger, healthier, and more male. And this was an influential paper, I think, early on in COVID-19 care. This paper looks at diabetes incidence in the youth um, using the OMOP CDM and finds differences between the US and India. Then we have a treatment pathways paper for epilepsy showing differences in drug resistance across epilepsy types and age of onset. Uh, and in a mental health study uh, using OMOP, it showed much uh, self-harm goes uncoded. And then here's an Odyssey network characterization of pediatric drug dispensing showing differences by age group and country. And an Odyssey network characterization study showing that cancer patients receive similar care to non-cancer patients in three chronic diseases. And next we look at Odyssey uh, estimation methods. The first paper, uh, asks not to use case control designs because they're not needed in retrospective database studies and they can bring in bias in those kinds of studies. The following paper looked at upper GI bleeding compared designs like self-control case series to other designs like case control and found that they were better. So in fact, confirming the previous paper. Uh, the next paper looked at distributed statistical analysis allowing a federated database this one accounts for heterogeneity across sites, so does not pull all the results and assume that everything is similar. And the next paper uh, is a very important paper for us, published recently in JAMIA, which we've spent years in Odyssey describing rigorous observational research. This puts those uh, uh, findings down into 10 legend principles, which are described uh, in this paper. And then in a companion paper, also published in JAMIA, <clears throat> test those principles out on a hypertension study. It finds that of the Odyssey results that uh, could be uh, compared to randomized trials, 93% of them overlapped. And expected is 95, so very good overlap, along with good covariate balance, good coverage, and good transitivity on triplets. The next study uh, compared hand-picked confounders, which is the old way of doing it for a pain study, and found a lot of spurious signals when compared to Odyssey's approach of large-scale propensity adjustment. <clears throat> the next study showed that actually uh, only 15% of RCTs, randomized trials, can be replicated with observational studies. The difficulties due to ascertaining interventions, indications, inclusion criteria, and endpoints. And the final paper um, is an alternative to large scale propensity score, so basic research, this case using counterfactual chi generative adversarial networks or GANs to address covariate balance and confounding using the Odyssey infrastructure. Next, we look to estimation results. <clears throat> first paper was our first large scale publication from the legend this on hypertension, looking at first-line antihypertensive classes, uh, showing something expected that non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers were inferior to other classes, but also something unexpected that thiazide and thiazide-like diuretics uh, had better effectiveness and safety than ACE inhibitors, which are taken by over 40% of the world population with hypertension. So this was an important paper. The next paper was also part of that hypertension study, looking at diuretics, showing that uh, hydrochlorothiazide had better safety and the same effectiveness as chlorothaladone, where the latter is the recommended drug, um, but real world usage uh, uh, showed differently. And this was already incorporated into the medical letter 
uh, for making recommendations on clinical care. The next paper was an Odyssey Network study, also on hypertension, showing largely similar effectiveness and safety for combinations of antihypertensive drugs, although slightly higher heart, ri um, heart failure risk and stroke risk uh, when combining uh, calcium channel blockers versus combining diuretics. The next paper is a um, Odyssey Network study of anti-osteoporosis medications um, showing that they had similar hip fractures in esophageal cancer, although alendronate showed more vertebral fractures and more atypical femoral fractures. This Korean Odyssey Network study showed inflammatory bowel disease has worse prognosis uh, with earlier onset. <clears throat> and this Odyssey Network study showed that partial knee replacement surgery resulted in less need for pain medications and less thromboembolism, uh, but higher risk of need for revision compared to total knee replacement. This is uh, a result that we would have expected, but now we've confirmed it in a large scale study. This local Odyssey uh, study showed that a copper IUD had a lower risk of cervical cancer than a hormone based one, and it's being converted to an Odyssey network study. Uh, this Odyssey network study was very important, which showed that even short-term use of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin uh, resulted increased risk of mortality, angina, and heart failure, and that long-term use of hydroxychloroquine, even without azithromycin, was associated with increased mortality. Uh, this was used by the European Medicines Agency uh, in its determination that hydroxychloroquine approval should be revoked. It was also shared with the FDA. Uh, this Odyssey Network study showed that uh, no increased risk in COVID-19 by the use of angiotensin drugs, which is important um, so that patients don't stop the antihypertensive medication for fear of COVID. Uh, this was an Odyssey, Net Odyssey study showing that an anti antihyperglycemic agent had similar risk of acute pancreatitis to other uh, antihyperglycemic agents in type 2 diabetes. And the next study showed that sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors had increased risk of DKA compared to other classes. Interesting, it showed that, that this, the, the amount of increase depended on the definition of the disease. And finally, we moved to three studies on prediction. The first, <clears throat> studying how to aggregate site-specific prediction models to apply a summary model to a new site and how to make it improve over time. Uh, the next study taking existing affibrillation uh, stroke prediction models and using the Odyssey network to do large scale prediction validation. And finally, generating a prediction model for hemorrhagic transformation of stroke with external validation of the uh, AUC. Again, I apologize for the papers that weren't presented today. Um, and uh, I know there's a lot of great work currently going on and papers that made it to archive didn't make it to PubMed. We look forward for those publications next year. Uh, we had a great year in Odyssey research. And I want to congratulate all the collaborators for their work on methods and concrete results that influenced healthcare. Very good. <laughs>